We're going to get started here. Uh, today's talk is about hardening Windows applications. And uh, this is Ollie B. He's going to give you a little bit of background on uh, where he's from. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, glad to see so many people showed up. Uh, I know there are lots of good talks going on at this time slot, so I'm not surprised. Um, I wouldn't be here either. Anyway, uh, I have to be here, so uh, i just do a quick introduction of myself first. Uh, my name is Ulla, or you can call me Oli if that's easier to pronounce. Uh, I'm from Sweden. And uh, today I'm here representing the Toolcrypt group, which is basically a, a small group of researchers from uh, Scandinavian countries, uh, mostly. Um, we do basically defensive research in, in OS technologies um, and uh, network security. And we publish some stuff on our website, which is in the slides, www.toolcrypt.org. I have to pimp that out. Um, by day, I work for the Swedish government, the Swedish Armed Forces, um, also doing defensive um, system security. So um, what's this talk all about? Well, the agenda for today is I'm going to give you a brief introduction for those of you who aren't really up to speed on the Windows security model and the security how security works in, uh, in Windows. And then we're going to go through some interesting features of Windows that um, can be used to enhance the security of your applications. Uh, and we're going to finish off with a section on strategies for uh, making more secure Windows applications by employing some of these technologies that we've talked about. So let's just breeze into this. Uh, before I actually do, uh, are there any developers here today? Oh, there are. Interesting. <laughs> it's always nice to hear to get developers coming to security conferences. Um, right. So uh, the Windows security model is uh, there's the central part of the Windows security model is built on security descriptors, which are basically um, um, a um, uh, sorry. Uh, I'll, I won't get ahead of myself. Um, before we go to security descriptors, uh, who hasn't heard of a SID? Everybody knows what a SID is, right? So I'll skip through this slide because it's just there if nobody knew what it was. A security descriptor is basically what um, a label you put on a system resource, an operating system resource, uh, that controls the security access to that resource. So in the security descriptor, um, data structure, you'll have some fields like the owner of the object, uh, the group of the object basically just used for POSIX because in Unix systems we have an owner and a group um, that we can set permissions for, uh, but not really used in the Windows world. And there are some access control lists. Uh, there's a discretionary access control list which is used to grant or deny uh, access to the system res resource. And there's the system access control list, which is used for, among other things, uh, auditing. Uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, oops. So uh, access control lists basically built up of, it's just a list of access control entries. And access control entries um, uh, are of a certain type. Um, so you have one type for Example, uh, controlling auditing of um, access to system resources, and that's only used in the sy uh, system access control list or the SACL. I'll, I'll, I'll keep referring to these as DACL and SACL, so it's much easier to say. Um, we have some flags in each uh, uh, access control entry, uh, flags controlling, for example, inheritance. For example, in a file system, you can set uh, a DACL on a directory that will propagate through to subdirectories and things like that. Um, and an access mask. And the access mask is basically what you um, match uh, uh, the access that's being uh, asked from a system user to a specific resource uh, to the access control list that gives the grants the user the access. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. And of course, there's a SID that identifies the trustee or the user that's granted this access. So the access mask uh, can, for example, be read access only, and that would set a number of bits in this bit field. Um, now, 
resources in Windows are mostly, most of the time, they're represented by objects, uh, so-called objects in the kernel. This has nothing to do with object-oriented programming or anything like that. They're just called objects. And um, these live in the kernel, um, so they're not accessible uh, to use land applications, of course, because they could be manipulated. Um, and uh, a, a kernel object, basically, I'm going to skip through this because I'm, I think it's mostly obvious to the people who actually are here today. Um, most of them contain a security descriptor that controls the access to the actual system resource represented by this object. Um, so how do the applications then uh, get access to these system resources? Well, basically, they ask for access to a named object, for example, or some other uh, object that uh, they want access to, and a kernel function called seAccessCheck um, compares the um, DACL in the uh, security descriptor line by line or access control entry by access control entry from the start to the, uh, uh, from the top to the bottom of the list against a access token that the current, uh, that the calling um, thread or process is running under. Um, so for example, if I have an, a process running as a standard user on my desktop, it would compare that, uh, the SID of that user, for example, to um, each access control list entry in uh, turn. And once it finds a SID that matches, it would compare the access mask in the access control entry to the access that's being asked to be granted. And if those match, uh, or it, rather if the uh, requested access is a subset of the access in the uh, access mask specified in the access control list, access would be granted. Now there are other um, um, access control entries, of course, of other types. I said uh, there's, for example, a um, access control entry type to deny access as well as grant access. And that's pretty important to the security model. Um, now, these objects are basically uh, granted access to and a opaque value called a handle is returned to the user and the user land. And basically, for each process, there's in the kernel a table of system resources that, are, uh, that have been granted access to, that have been issued a handle to uh, some thread in this particular process. Um, and basically, that's a lookup table for where this handle is basically an index into the lookup table, which gives you a pointer to the actual kernel object. And since the uh, list, sorry, the table lives in kernel land, it's not susceptible to manipulation by user land processes. So that's how, how the security works. So the important thing to re uh, remember about this is once you get granted access to a resource, once somebody some piece of code in a process gets granted access to a system resource that gets added to the uh, handle table of this process and from then on until the handle is closed and it's get, it gets taken off the table, uh, every code in that process, all running code in that process has access to that particular resource. Um, now tokens, I mentioned an access token before. And an access token is basically uh, the data structure that contains all the context, secure, security context information that's relevant to a um, particular thread or process. So when we say that a process is running as a specific user, what we really mean is that there's a specific SID in the uh, primary token of that process. Um, so a token looks something like that. Uh, there's loads of fields in there. I've tried to list some of the relevant ones. Um, one is a list of privileges, and we'll get into what privileges are in a bit. And there's a list of um, users and groups. So basically, um, if I'm logged in as a standard user, that list would contain my uh, unique user identity in the form of a SID, and it would probably contain the uh, SID of the standard users group or the domain users group or something like that. And there's also information about the, uh, what's called an impersonation level. So um, I said before that a, um, a process gets assigned a token, or a process uh, has a primary token. When a process gets started, um, it's get, it gets assigned by the system a primary token. And this is the access token uh, that um, uh, basically controls uh, or 
controls access to system resources, except in the case when a thread in the uh, process has uh, called something called an impersonation or a delegation. And what that means is that you can actually take a new token um, containing some completely different information and temporarily make it um, the access token for that particular thread. Uh, which is very uh, important, for example, if you're writing server software and you have users connect, uh, you'd really like to have access control being taken care of by the system and not being ha having to uh, compare um, or keep track of access to, uh, for example, all files in a file directory or directory structure. Um, so you'd much rather offload that to Windows. So what you could do then is, once a user has authenticated himself, uh, you uh, impersonate that user, which basically assigns a um, temporary impersonation level token uh, to that specific thread. And every access control request that's uh, made by that thread will then be compared to the information within that impersonation token. Um, so, what are privileges? Well, privileges are basically um, um, well privileges that you can, can assign to either a user or a group in the system, and they control access to um, certain functions within the system, um, certain um, you could call it. Um, um, Stuff like uh, uh, debugging the um, processes or getting access to the memory space of processes of another user, for example, is, is something that uh, you don't want anybody to do. So that's uh, granted by a specific privilege. And there's um, um, uh, a lot of these um, um, that can't be controlled by regular uh, DACLs in a security descriptor are controlled by privileges. So um, these privileges are stored in a list in the token, as I said, and by default they are disabled. So before a privilege gets used, you actually have to go in uh, and manipulate the token to enable the privilege before it can be used. It's kind of a safeguard um, to make sure that you're actually, you want to use that privilege at the specific time that you're using it in your code. So there is, uh, it isn't used um, so it doesn't have an unwanted side effect should your code be run by a user that has specific privilege. Um, okay, so hopefully um, my, oh, sorry, I'm very jet-lagged. Uh, hopefully my ramblings on security model have been somewhat clear to you, uh, or if you already knew it, I'm happy for you. So we'll move on to the actual meat of the talk, which is uh, going through some security-related features in Windows. And we're going to try to discuss how these can be used by third-party application developers to um, increase the bar against attack. Um, so first of all, there's this lovely feature called a restricted token that's been in uh, the Windows OS since 2000, since the 2000, Windows 2000 release. And basically what you can do is um, you can remove certain privileges or remove certain SIDs from uh, the list of users and groups within a certain token. And that token can then be used to uh, either uh, as an impersonation token, or more interestingly, it can be used to create a new process using this token. And this is really interesting if you're, for example, uh, if you want to um, sandbox off a piece of code uh, that you want to run with lower privileges um, than uh, what the user normally has. So, for example, if, uh, you're not, if you don't trust that code or if that code is um, parsing uh, input that is untrusted that comes from either the network or a file or something like that, the, um, you might want to um, break that off into a separate process and uh, make sure that that process runs with as few privileges as, as possible. Um, so you can do uh, a number of different things with the create restrict to restricted token call, where you can um, uh, both prevent SIDs from granting access. So you're basically making certain SIDs in the list uh, restricted, which means that they uh, can only be used to deny access. So when you're walking the uh, access controller,